Start. Hello everybody. We are talking about GraphQL today. Just the, an introduction, just scratching the surface. So what is an API? An API is a application program interface. It's a set of kind of protocols, it's an interface uh, for which servers and clients can communicate basically. And uh, RESTful API is the most common one, it's the standard way. And uh, it means that we can, that the server gives us an endpoint, so an URL, we can contact to send him data or request him data. For example, here, when we type this URL, we asking for a list of cats because the server offers us an endpoint, this one, and gives us some logic in the server. So hopefully he's checking a database and he gives back us the data. So for example, if we, if we contact this URL, this endpoint, we should have back a representation of a JSON file, okay? So, cut facts. Here we go. We got back what the server sent us. Because we are, now we see what happened. In uh, our client side, we use fetch. That's uh, a relatively new function of JavaScript. Before we were using CRL with callbacks, but Okay, doesn't matter. And we are trying to contact the, um, this endpoint, this URL of the server. And uh, we, when the server gives us back a response, this is the response, we transform the JSON file or the representation, the string representation of the JSON style in a JavaScript object. And uh, we call it data here. So, in this case, we are getting back this all, it's an array. Uh, where were we? Yeah, it's an array, so we can map through the array and uh, make our list of items. You see that, uh, yeah, okay, in data we have all facts, every fact has an uh, ID and uh, a text, for example, you see here, ID and uh, text. So we are making a list of facts, just the facts. No ID, uh, no type, no user, no upvotes, no user upvotes. That's what we get. And it's yeah, what, I mean, what if we just want the text? We have back all this stuff that we don't need. Um, so, GraphQL APIs solves this problem and more of them. It's the same thing, it's always an API, but the server is different, accepts uh, GraphQL queries and mutation, but we will see. There are um, a few advantages, like when we, we send a request to the server, as we seen before, the server gives us all, no, all the data with user and all this stuff. This is our query. We are asking for the text of the facts. That's it. And the server is giving back just this. So it's less heavy and yeah, also for the network, it's better. And uh, in, uh, in RESTful APIs, REST endpoints, with it's not proper name, but yeah, we have different endpoints for having a list of users. We can contact this, we can send a GET request to this endpoint. Then, uh, uh, I mean, what if 
we want a list of posts of just one user. We get here the list of users. Maybe we have just a name and we want to know the ID of the user. So we contact this endpoint. Then uh, once we have the ID corresponding to that name, we can contact this endpoint. And then uh, we can contact it again with posts. I mean, you can also jump this part. But by the way, uh, here there's just one endpoint for all the requests we can send to the server. It's this. And we decide what we want. It's not the server that decides what to send. Uh, yeah, for who, well, for who loves strongly typed stuff like TypeScript, GraphQL is a dream because we are making a schema strongly typed. So we have an interface user and a ID has to be the type of ID. It's something internal to GraphQL. So it has to be unique. The first name is going to be a string, strictly a string. And this um, exclamation point means that can't be null. Last name is going to be a string that can't be null. And post is an, an array of posts. Every post cannot be null. So and then we have post, another interface with the same thing, a title and text and author. That's pretty much what we need to operate in our front end. There is another thing, but I'm going to explain it later. So there are three concepts, the query, mutation, and subscriptions. Query are for getting the data, similar to the get, the get request using RESTful APIs. And mutation for add, delete, and modify the data. Subscription, it's something more complicated, and I'm not going to cover it today. Uh, just as a parenthesis, uh, when we have a RESTful API, we have to read the documentation. It's going to be pretty, sometimes simple, sometimes complicated, because we have to make our own, for example, here. It's not that simple. Probably we will have to add other stuff, like parameters, values. We have to construct our own call. Let's say that. Here, we have only post request. So we don't, know, we don't have to know which kind of uh, HTTP request the server accepts. That's it. So I've prepared a little server for us to work today. Uh, yes. Um, just take a quick look for you to see how the server, how the backend is. Just a quick look. So let's start here. We are creating a server using GraphQL Yoga. Uh, I don't know if you know. Apollo server, but it's something we can use in a backend for dealing with GraphQL. It's something like what Express does for uh, RESTful APIs. Yeah. And uh, a list of mutation as query. Uh, I'm, I'm using GraphQL Yoga. It's uh, made on top of uh, Apollo server because it's more developer, developer friendly and has some stuff out of the box, more readable than the document. I, I like more the documentation of GraphQL Yoga. So then we are making our servers, basically. In uh, here, we are starting the server. As you see, same thing as node, no difference. And we are here um, starting our communication with the endpoint, that it's a Prisma endpoint. And Prisma is a service that allows us to have something between our server and a database that gives us more 
power. I say the Prisma, for example, gives us uh, this, a list of crude operation we can uh, use for operating with the, with the database. We got everything here, like we got already query. So Prisma gives us the opportunity to query the database just using this function, this method, this query, and gives us back a fact. We have uh, uh, facts and we can uh, give it some parameters like fact, uh, give me the facts where the name is, uh, blah, blah, blah. So we can use this directly. And then we have our data model. We have only the fact. This is the schema I was talking about. Created app, for example, it's, um, it's something that is auto-generated when we create a new fact. So we don't have to provide this, actually. Uh, and then we have the schema for the mutation in queries, but it's something we will see in the client side. And, uh, okay, Let, let's leave behind the, the most exciting part and do some code. Okay. Everything okay now? Yeah, question? No, all right. So, here we have our app. I, I prepared some things because I don't want you to be bored while I'm writing all this boilerplate. And what we have to know as a front-end developers is just a, a couple of things. How the scheme, the schema is made, so which are the data we can modify and ask for, and how we can do this, like uh, which functions, let's call it, which queries and with the, uh, how they are made that the servers offers us. And we can see that by visiting the, wait, the server page. So our server now is running at port 4000, and that's what we see. It's a playground, so we can test our, um, our queries and mutations. If you go here, you have the queries that you can use, and are the facts for getting a list of facts, uh, an array that cannot be null, and uh, those are the data we can uh, expect to get back. In a mutation, we have submit facts, that's a name. It's important we know the name and which kind of data we can give the server for getting back what. Like, he gives him back uh, a fact and then the fact can have this, will have this data inside and we can access them. And here we have the, the actual schema. It's a little bit harder to, to read than this, but I like it more. So let's try to make a couple of a query and a fact. So now we want a um, list um, of just the text and maybe the ID of the facts. I uh, just, I have, I show you. Right. I've also prepared this, um, a database here. Uh, uh, um. Okay, so I've added some data in our database so we can uh, query it and have something back. Okay, let's try a query. So, query. Ooh. Yes, I can, maybe. See that? Yeah. So we are querying uh, the database, the, let's call it facts, T, 
table or collection. It depends which kind of database you are using. And from the facts, we want the text and the upvotes. See, text and votes. So what do you think uh, this is gonna get us back? A list of what? It's gonna give us back a uh, JavaScript object with a list of facts, like an array of facts. There are objects as well, and they contain just the text and the upvotes, right? Yeah? Yeah. All right. Ta-da! Let's see. What if we delete this? What do I need going back? Only the text, right? Yes. And what if we don't do anything here? Hmm? No. Nothing. It, it gives me no error, but it's, it's something we cannot do. We have to provide which data we want back. Can we return everything? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe this is a keyword, but I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. So, okay. Then let's try a mutation. A mutation for insert some data in the database. I want to see it. Where is it? I want to see the schema, where it's gone. Disappear. All right. Okay. So here we have the mutation. The name of the mutation is submit facts, and it is giving back a fact. And we can specify the text and uh, the number of upvotes, and they can't be null. Okay. So let's start. Mutation and uh, add. No, submit the fact. You need to submit the Oh, okay. Submit fact, and then we have to pass the data. We want to send the server. This is, a, this is strictly a string, so for example, hello. It's not a cat fact, but just for uh, show you how it works. Hello GraphQL. Then we have to provide the number of upvotes. That has to be a number, for example. Then we get back this fact, and we have to ask for specific something back because if we don't tack must have subfields means that i have to to decide what i have back and for example it's um by one text and create that so what happened when i click this the play button Hmm? And I will, I mean, I will insert this stuff. I didn't hear specific you. Time. Specific so time. You get back hello, GraphQL. Yeah. And you yeah. yeah. And uh, at the same time, I'm inserting this data in the database. Yeah. Okay. So if we if we give. Uh, if you see the database now, I can do the query again, but all right. Database now contains, hopefully, yes, GraphQL with a one upvote. Understood? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I got a question. So when you talk about a database, there's GraphQL, an actual database, 
No, it's not an actual database. Uh, in fact, we, we have Prisma here in the middle of our server and uh, our database. So we send data to Prisma, uh, Prisma communicate with the database and does all the work for us. So what happens, for instance, if we have a running application in production mm. with our database in MongoDB, for instance, mm. we want to integrate GraphQL. So how do we connect what we have already, which is a database with facts, whatever data is with our database? With our if you want to use Prisma, it's the best way to do so. Well, what is Prisma? Prisma is a service that we place uh, between our server and the database that deals with this deals stuff. With the GraphQL and the database. Yes. So we send our queries and mutation to Prisma. Actually, if you okay. if you see, there was uh, the endpoint. Yeah. It's Prisma. If you see. Prisma here. can deal with different database engines. Yeah. Yeah. You can use your own database or you can use their demo database. I think I'm using now their demo. Uh, it should be a, a SQL, uh, probably a PostgreSQL database. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. Why would you use Prisma as a middleman? Why not just send the relay to them? Because it is, it's much more complicated to. Uh, you need to set it up yourself. You mean yeah, it's like. Uh, no, Prisma gives you, uh, as you see before, the generated crude operation create, delete. Uh, up, up, I don't remember. So Update and. and yeah. Yeah. Hmm? yeah, you can connect. When uh, you register, when you create a new service on uh, on Prisma, you can connect your own database, and or just use the demo one. Uh, where were you? Uh, okay. So. Now let's try to integrate GraphQL client side in our application. Uh, I have already installed all the dependencies, so we are gonna just to import them. Before of all, just create the list. It's gonna be a class component because I decide so. So we are porting React and component. from React. Then uh, uh, create client. We are gonna import this because we need to get connected to the actual server. So we have to establish a connection. Uh, from Create client. Then we have to import also mm, GQL. Uh, yes, from GQ, I, I explain now what's G, uh, GQL. GQL is the way we can write uh, GraphQL code inside JavaScript. Same as for example, for styled components, if you use CSS inside JavaScript, we have to use, um, I, I don't remember the name, but with backticks, no? Have you ever seen, no, styled components, how it works? If we, if we type something that's not JavaScript inside JavaScript, we have to do something. And here, we can use GQL. So let's start the, clia the client. No, let's. Template. Pardon? Template. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So we start our client uh, connection. Voila. Yes, it's going to be our client. Then the class component. Let's call it fact list. We are going to use the state as well. So, all right. Here, 
we need to there are different ways to implement react uh, one is using render props one is hooks and one is uh, i don't remember the other one but we are using two different for the mutation and uh, the query so where were we yes so we will have a list of facts let's call it now uh, h3 h2 facts for adding a title then uh, uh, it's going to be a list an unordered list okay and yeah pretty much that's it we are going to uh, render our array okay of components li components okay so let's see there are so much things to i want the query to happen one uh, before the component mounts because if i if i call uh, what I get back before I actually get it back is going to throw us an error. And we'll mount. Um, so I query client. Yeah. And here I'm using jQuery. So mm, query. Well, back ticks, and we write the query here. It's the same we have, we have written the, in the in the playground. Query. We want the facts, and we want just the ID and the text. Okay, and this should be it. There are missing parentheses. Think of back tick or are you closing it? I have to close the back tick, yeah. Um, here? Maybe? The problem is you're writing all the code inside of the argument of the component will mount function. If you pay attention to number 14, you are opening a curly brace, you're not closing the parentheses. Syntax is a bit weird, right? You are opening. Ah, okay. What's this? Ah, okay. I don't understand what's the problem. Okay, now it should work. No, not yet. No. Thanks. Then at the bottom of that number 25, you need to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's hope it works. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So when uh, the query is done, it client dot query is uh, it returns a promise. So we have to use the then stuff. Okay. So when uh, we have the response, what we do? We update the state because I choose to to use the state for the data I have back. The state is going to be uh, so an all JavaScript object containing an array of facts with e I only ID and text. So it's an array. OK. So there we set the state. Pardon? Ah, yeah, sorry, it's uh, an object, so, yeah, good catch. Okay. <laughs> okay, now it's good? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let's update the state. Set state. It's facts. It's going to be... I wish I could 
uh, could show you what this is going to return, but just believe me. It's um, an object. Uh, it's, a, it's a rest. Uh, no, it's res. It's the name of the object here. Dot data. It's always like this. Uh, dot facts. Facts is the array of facts. Okay. A bit clear? You understand? Uh, yes? Okay. Uh, so res dot data dot facts. And this is the array. So there we can use the array in the state and map through it. Yeah. We use JavaScript inside JSX, so we have to use the calibrases. Yeah. This dot date dot facts. So the array we map through the array and uh, um, yeah fact and we return a list element that has to be the key. key that's why I'm asking for the ID too because react wants a key when I do uh, something like mapping rendering a list fact dot key Mm, no. Sad. Sad .id. Ah, yeah. <laughs> right. ID. And inside fact dot text, right? Okay. I don't know if I can see now in the app. Probably have to comment this out and start it. Okay. No. Can't resolve fact form in user where where are I calling the fact form? Oh. Should not be a problem. See? Ah, okay. So with a list of facts. I'm rendering a list of facts. Everybody happy? No? The endpoints in React, uh, <laughs> I have never used React um, endpoints in React. Hmm? The network tab. Can you refresh some the screen? Yeah, a lot of stuff. Mm. Hmm? That's it? Yeah, because I'm, I'm sending a, um, a post request to the server. Can you zoom that with command plus, please? Okay, can you show the headers? What they're, what, they're, what they're looking for. No, no, that's it. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, it's a post request. Uh, okay. You can query it? Yeah, yes. No, 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 you can't only... No, no. Um, Okay, so let's implement a mutation for sending data to the server and so the database. Really? Oh, okay. So okay, maybe the next workshop using a mutation.
Nice. Questions? Yes, in, it's in our, it's on GitHub. You can okay. download it now. Your slides and what are they in the files? Do you want to implement them again? Pardon? The slides. The slides. Ah, yes, yes, sure. Yeah, everything you want. Yes, sure. If you have questions and don't, don't want to uh, to do it now, just ask me later. Okay. Everybody happy. I like it. Nice. So thanks for watching. Thank you.